Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Quick question for everyone. Can a zebra change its stripes? Well, yes, if the rapid set of software acquisitions in the last few years by Zebra Technologies is anything to go by, because it has catapulted Zebra firmly into the world of SaaS and and injected some new magic into the ubiquitous hardware portfolio. But these aren't my words. These are the words of David Lancefield, Software Solutions Director at Zebra, who joined via the acquisition of the AI-powered workforce management and planning company called Reflexis. After reading about Zebra's recent flurry of acquisitions, including Adaptive Vision, which is machine vision software, Profitect, prescriptive analytics for retail, Reflexis, the AI-powered workforce management and planning tool that I mentioned a few moments ago, and Antuit.ai, which is an AI demand forecast and inventory optimization. When you put all those together, it seems to me that they're all aimed at complementing and enhancing their current software and hardware for frontline workers, whether they be in retail, warehouse, manufacturing, logistics, and all those familiar areas. But with so many big brands under their belt, how are Zebra helping retailers improving inventory visibility? How are they helping optimise costs to streamline shipment completion times, identify fraud? And what is the technology involved in doing all that? And ultimately, how are people, hardware, software, working together to solve those problems? Well, they are just some of the many reasons that why I invited David Lancefield onto the podcast today. And thankfully, he said yes. So with the scene perfectly set, buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to the UK, where you can join me and David Lancefield in conversation about Zebra Technologies and, and how they're bringing people, hardware and software together. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do and, and maybe even share your origin story too and, and what put you on this path you're on today? Yeah, thanks. So yeah, hi everyone. Good to be here. My name is Dave Lancefield. I'm Senior Director of Software for Zebra Technologies in the European region. So basically that means that I lead our overall go-to-market strategy in the region, make sure we have the right product skills and capabilities to help our customers find solutions to the problems that they face today and hopefully tomorrow as well. So I have an interesting kind of background. I certainly didn't, when I was sat in the careers office at school, I certainly never said I want to aspire to sell or lead a software business, but I basically just followed what I liked doing. So I got a Saturday job in retail when I was at school with Next, ended up spending seven years working for them while I did my degree. And I joined the graduate program at Home Retail Group which owned home base Argos and Habitat at the time. And then through that, I met a company called Reflexis that specialized in retail software and ended up joining them when they were kind of a startup. Reflexis subsequently got acquired by Zebra Technologies a couple of years ago. And that leads me to to today. So I've had quite a a varied career, both in, in industry and in a and in technology as well. The reason I always ask that question is just for anybody listening anywhere in the world that are thinking about going into technology and maybe convince themselves that you know they're not technical enough or they can't do it. <laughs> or and, and every single person I speak with, nobody nobody ever set out to to join a career in technology or had it in mind. It's almost like the universe gives everyone that gentle nudge in the right direction. And in your case as well, it was that path that led you to Zebra Technology. But can you tell me more about the company and the problems that you're solved or known for solving with technology for your customers? Yeah, definitely. So so firstly, I agree. I agree on the career path. Um, technology is is ultimately about people at the end yep. of the day and understanding of the problem. But it, Zebra is a really fascinating company, actually. I can guarantee that, I, that the majority of the listeners today will probably interact with the Zebra product somewhere in their daily life, but actually not even know it. Yeah. So Zebra is one of the leading technology companies in the world. We have a broad product for portfolio that spans both mature sectors like data capture, barcode scanning, printing, mobile computing, 
to some really kind of cutting edge growth markets like machine vision, robotics and software. Company has actually been around for about 50 years. So it's a very, really well established company. And I think Traditionally, the organization has really been known for the kind of data cap- data capture and scanning. That's where most people will see a Zebra device. You know, when you buy something in a shop, it's, it's going to be a Zebra barcode scanner that captures the barcode, or it might be a Zebra printer that printed the price label, for example. But increasingly over the past few years, Zebra mobile computers will have become part of your everyday life. They're what you're postman will use to scan your parcel when they deliver it if you go to a festival it will be what the person uses to scan your ticket and if you go into hospital it will be what books you in as a as a patient as well and that's really that's really happened because our customers have have accelerated the digitization of their workforce to both improve the customer experience and and enable productivity and that's really at the heart of everything we do as an organization it's the passion to enable performance at the edge of the enterprise which means really where work work gets done whether that's shops hospitals delivery etc we want to form the experience of the employee to make their life better whilst also improving productivity and outcomes for our, for our customers. And I think you put that perfectly because as an ex-IT guy, I'm more than familiar with Zebra devices. And I'm the kind of guy that will, will go to a, a festival or a sporting event or whatever, and I'm looking behind the scenes at what technology is on display. So whether it be a Zebra device there or, or anything at all, or the, the wireless APIs, et cetera. And, what stood out for me, though, in your case, is you're right, right in what you're saying. Zebra have got such this huge reputation of surrounding everyone with these devices. But how did a traditional hardware firm like Zebra get caught up in that SaaS bug, and, and, and especially around some of those recent acquisitions? I mean, you mentioned Reflexis a few moments ago, which is another big name. But can you tell me more about that move and, and what inspired it? Yeah, absolutely. So... So software is is a is a real focus and kind of growth area for us alongside the robotics, machine vision, uh, et cetera, that I mentioned. I think it's for a few reasons. So firstly, when when you're at the top of your game, that's the time that you should you should, you know, start thinking about how do we how do we as an organization take take the next step? How do we how do we grow? How do we continue to add value? And, and we made that choice. But actually it's the customers that are that were coming to us and saying, well, you're you're delivering all of this value in the device, in the hardware that you're offering. How can how can I work more closely with you to unlock even more, even more benefit? And that's really where software comes in because the bit of the business that I lead, we're really focused on kind of work, what we call workflow transformation and optimization. So how do we work with a customer to take the process that they've got today that may happen on pen and paper or whatever, and, and not just make it an expensive old process by putting it on a mobile device, <laughs> but actually how do we how do we optimize it? How do we transform it? And how do we make it more productive or deliver a better outcome for the customer? And that's that's why we're investing in, in these software technologies because our customers are asking and we think we can we can add value in this space. And I must admit, one of my big gripes in the modern world is the binary thinking that a lot of people fall into, such as everything's got to be making a choice between working from home or working in the office. And I think the the, the real value is somewhere in the middle there every time. But for those reasons alone, do you think the whole hardware versus software debate can be somewhat of a defunct way of thinking? Yeah, I I think it's, I do believe it's, I wouldn't say defunct, but... I think I think increasingly what we're seeing is customers are facing very complex challenges which require end-to-end technology solutions to address them. And the reality of that situation is it has to be a seamless a seamless end user journey um, through through the workflow that you're trying to execute and that's likely to touch hardware and software as well as traditional human processes at some point in that. So I think this kind of binary hardware software w- will exist because it has to. Yeah. But what we're seeing is, and where we think we can add value is because we've got this ability to string those processes together in a more seamless way. And, and every CIO that I talk to 
their number one ambition is to simplify their landscape, reduce breakpoints, eliminate integration, reduce the number of vendors that they're working with. And that's because they know that actually consolidation in this space and consolidating with vendors that can that can actually support transformation offers incremental value to them. I, I think, and that's what I'm hearing anyway. And again, as someone that's chatting with CIOs right across Europe and having the ear of so many different businesses and your customers there, why do you think we're seeing the rise of vertical SaaS for, I don't know, niche industries or specific industries such as retail and logistics, et cetera? Why do you think we're seeing that? Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a great question. And it's one that I, I strongly agree with. And I think we are seeing significant growth in the software industries across Retail and logistics are definitely two verticals where there is significant investment and growth taking place. I think those two are good examples of where there's kind of a number of pro-economic and industry-specific factors that are converging. I think the first thing is that in both of those industries, productivity is really important. So they both run on very tight margins and you've got high numbers of employees needed just to keep the lights on. If you think about operating a warehouse, it's manual work that requires high numbers of employees just to do the picking, to unload vans, etc. Automation quite hasn't co- hasn't quite caught up yet. And in those cases, if you can simplify a workflow even by a small amount, the productivity benefit is really big. So that's one reason where software can kind of add value. The second is is the people dynamic that I haven't spoken to anybody in the past six months that has told me that it's easy to recruit people to work in their business. We have a huge challenge right now in the UK in particular, but certainly across Western Europe. So if you can't get people, but your sector is growing or changing, then you have to either automate process or remove it, or find more productive ways of doing it. And those vertical specific offerings, I think, enable people to do that because the benefit over a horizontal solution is that they tend to be very targeted at the specific processes and ways of operating in those industries. So if you're trying to build software to work in those complex environments, you really need to understand how they work. If you want to capture the benefit of the productivity saving or the automation of the process, et cetera. There'll always be a space for generalist horizontal offerings, but I think we're going to see more of these niche companies cropping up to solve very specific problems, almost like a vertical or or even maybe a use case level potentially. And I think what's refreshing to hear is this is a tech podcast. We're both passionate about technology and solving real problems. But the one word that we've men- we've both mentioned several times in the last 10 minutes is people. And it, it wasn't too long ago that we separated the worlds and tried to be or you either B2B or B2C. But I think there is a somewhat of a realization that it doesn't matter which of those uh, areas you're in. Actually, it's people doing business with other people. And uh, on that side of things, can you expand on why the – the consumerification of business SaaS is, is almost vital for ROI now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think, you know, we just talked about one trend, which is the growth of, of niche niche suppliers or or this. This is another trend that's that's really clear in the industry. Yeah. And I think I think it's for a very simple reason. If you want to if you want to execute a change through technology, adoption by people is at the core of it. I think there's a saying that says, you know, you can have the best plan in the world, but if you don't execute and people don't adopt adopt it, your outcome is still very poor. Yeah. So this is what I call the iPhone factor. There was a time maybe 20 years ago where the best technology people used was the technology in their workplace. That's long gone. Yeah. In many cases, people have far more advanced technology in their day-to-day life than they do in the workplace still. And there is still a lag in many software businesses between the user experience that's delivered in an enterprise offering versus the user experience of a consumer offering. We're investing, as an organization, we're we're investing more in this space than, than anywhere else because we build software for people that are not technology people. 
right? We build our software for somebody that sits on a checkout for four hours a week, or maybe he's done that job for 30 years and we're asking them to change what they do. So it has to be a consumer based experience if we're going to enable that level of adoption within an organization. And it's what people simply, simply expect in my view now. It's kind of table stakes, really. That that's my view of why, why that's that's kind of happening and why it's so critical to return on investment. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And a mistake I used to see in my, my former IT life was a business would typically hear about a new text, shiny new tech solution, and they must have it, they must get it, and then they go looking for what problems they can solve with it rather than Absolutely. starting with the problem. That's what it should always be about, and then look for the best solution to solve that problem. So with that in mind, can I ask you share what you're seeing in the market among businesses using vertical SaaS to solve real problems like empowering and retaining their workforce, addressing supply chain and inventory challenges, or providing exceptional customer service, et cetera, because that's where the magic happens, isn't it? That is absolutely where the magic happens. That's why we believe in this this transformation at the edge of the enterprise, because it's at the edge, that's where your strategy meets reality and where your brand is, is built and reinforced with the customer base. Um, that's why we're so passionate about it, and also why our customers believe in it so strongly. I think that there are some there are some really significant trends coming to the front in this space at, at the moment. The first is around labor labor optimization or workforce optimization technologies that can span from areas that we cover, like optimization of employee scheduling, simplification of absence booking, schedule planning availability because actually one of the biggest bears for anybody that's ever worked in a shop is that if you're you have a life outside of work and you want to have control over your working hours but the retailer is trying to balance your desire for control with their desire to to actually have you working when the customer demand is the greatest so technologies like the ones that we offer help help the retailer to balance that with the employee expectation and that improves retention in almost every one of our customers now that's also moving in other directions now where retailers are looking to actually how do they bring in complementary technologies like micro learning and and gamification offerings that make corporate objectives and and corp- execution of corporate strategy much more engaging and and fun for the employee and almost bring in a kind of social media experience to what it means to work in actually what can be a very hard, hard job. It's tough working in a shop. It's really tough working in a warehouse. That also extends into transformation of the operation. So one of the things that I think is particularly prevalent in retail at the moment is that the, the operating model, and what I mean by that is what happens in a shop is becoming significantly more complex. So our customers are increasingly investing in technologies like task management that help to that help people in stores to work through that complexity. You know, the job, it, the day when you could walk in and you know what you did in your job is gone. Your job is going to change in the moment based on the customer, what's going on on social media a delivery order that's coming in from Deliveroo or Uber Eats, whatever, that that complexity and that that changes, it requires solutions that help people to manage through that. And I think in the supply chain space, well, what a year it's been in terms of managing supply chain. You know, I, I don't talk to chief chief supply chain officers that much, but I certainly talk to the people on the technology side that are responsible for these solutions. And I think this year has put more pressure on the supply chain than probably any any in living history. So investing in technology that helps you improve your forecasting, understand where demand signals are coming from. And that, that's becoming more fluid as well because the consumer base is being influenced by a much broader variety of factors. You know, I think you know Zara is a great example. You can have address that goes on social media that will 
almost instantly change the profile of demand as a result of that if it's captured and it goes viral. So those things are things that the supply chain hasn't had to deal with before. And then you've got the added complexity of actually once it gets into a shop, is it there? Has it been merchandised correctly? Is it present? And that's really where things like prescriptive analytics can help address those challenges because you can't just rely on a store manager looking at a report anymore and making the decision. You have to have technology that helps you to kind of realign your operation or do the next best action in the moment when it comes to optimizing your inventory and where it is in your business. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. And so many big, powerful points you just made. And I think one of the other problems I've seen in my career is when it comes to a, a business bringing in a new type, a new tech solution, they actually bring it in to reduce headcount. That's one of the first things that they do. Whereas for myself, I've always thought that the magic happens again when people technology and new solutions when they all converge that's where the cool stuff happens but i'm curious how are you seeing SaaS changing workplaces into almost ecosystems where things like people inventory hardware and software are all connected yeah i think it's i think you just made a really great point so what they're trying to do is find technology solutions that enable them to either realign their existing workforce to deal with these new and changing kind of practices in the workplace or help them be more productive. It's often not about trying to cut headcount. And that's really where this kind of, this kind of ecosystem question comes in, I think, because increasingly the workplace, particularly, you know, the areas that we've talked about, like logistics and, and retail environments, they are highly connected spaces now. So you've got, You've got the the person that represents the brand, the ethos is that front line to the customer, but actually increasingly they may have a device in their hand, like a Zebra device, for example, that all of a sudden transforms their access to information. It changes them effectively from a line worker to a knowledge worker when it comes to what that customer experience, what that customer journey is when the customer asks them for help or asks them for assistance. And then through that device and the software that's on it, we're connecting that person to real-time visibility of inventory, not just in their store, but also across the across the supply chain. So they can say to that customer, we haven't got it here. We've got it in this store. Would you like me to order it? to collect here, to ship to your store. Actually, that item is going to be in stock in two weeks. Would you like me to place an order and it will be with you then? All of a sudden, this this customer journey is is transforming because of how we're creating the ecosystem around it. And then even within the store, how the employee accesses information about their job, what it means to be part of the brand, the place of work is changing. You know, I've got a customer right now that is rolling out our solutions to connect their entire workforce effectively with their executive and senior management team in a seamless, in a seamless communication, because that's important to them. That's, that was unheard of 10 years ago. So the ecosystem is not just extending kind of around the shop or the place of work is actually extending across across the business and it's technology that's connecting people systems and processes to to achieve that and it feels like there are so many big changes in every industry at the moment i think every industry is evolving at breakneck speed with the the pace of technological change but they also say of course that this speed of technological change will probably never go this slow again. So it's an incredibly (laughs) exciting space. But what excites you about the future and where we're heading? I think think I'm generally excited by the future because the the ingenuity of of the human race never fails to amaze me. I think we've got some really big challenges that we have to face in the future. The first is around sustainability. So we have to make technology more sustainable. So as an organization, we put sustainability at the heart of our product designs, our supply chains, et cetera, not because it's a, not because it's a financial benefit, but because it's the right thing to do for 
the future of the planet and for and for the human race. So this sustainability challenge will come more to the front, I think. But with that, it's also going to create opportunities around new technology, new areas of investment. You know, I just saw yesterday in the news that um, some a team in Finland has created a battery out of sand to store power. Like I think we're going to see more intelligence and artificial intelligence deployed not to replace humans, but actually to augment complex, complex processes. And actually there are there are some things where AI and machine learning just do a better job than humans, particularly when it comes to looking at big data sets, looking for patterns across complex problems. And with these, you know, these complex problems that we've got to solve, it's going to take big thinking to, to do it. So I think the, the growth in AI and machine learning and how that's going to become deployed sensibly to enhance productivity or customer journeys or or whatever is is also a really exciting growth space and i think there's this this automation generally so uh, our acquisition of fetch robotics last year is really exciting to me because it's a prime example of where technology is not about replacing people it's about actually using it to improve the the experience of the worker. So if you don't know fetch robots, they're really deployed extensively in warehouse and logistics environments where people would traditionally walk hundreds of, well, not hundreds, but many miles a day moving stuff from pick to conveyor to pack. Actually, that's where a robot can, can do that work. And I think we're going to see more of that kind of automation to make the life of people easier i think that's a pretty pretty exciting trend for me as well really is and i feel like a perfect moment to end on but before we do we started the podcast talking about your origin story what put you on this path and as we've come full circle i always like to think that none of us are able to achieve success without a little help along the way so before i let you go is there a particular person that you're grateful towards who helped you get where you are you just want to give them a bit of a shout out <laughs> i love this question and so yeah it's been, i'm actually going to be really cheeky and, and name a couple if that's if that's okay yeah sure um, go for it so the firstly, I think parents are blessed with with parents that have always supported me, and I think that's that's one of the greatest things. The second is I think we're so privileged in this country to have an amazing education system and teachers that you know teachers are the, are the lifeblood of our economy and our, our growth and providing opportunities to young people. I, I had a particularly amazing teacher called Sean Grayson, who was my geography teacher. That really saw the potential in me. I did a geography degree as well. Hence, probably my human-centric way of looking at problems. <laughs> and then my boss at Reflexis, a guy called Brett Friedman, who really kind of championed and sponsored my career. As well. So yeah, those people get a name check in this. <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> Absolutely love that. Fantastic. And finally, before I let you go, for people listening that want to find out more information about Zebra, all the different areas that we talked about today, what's the best starting point for everything, including contacting your team if they've got any additional questions? Yeah, definitely. So the best starting point is zebra.com, which is our website. That's the portal to all of our solutions. Um, You can follow us on LinkedIn, social media, uh, et cetera. Just look for Zebra and look for the Stripey, Stripey Zebra Faith. And we're at many trade shows and events throughout the year as well. And we've normally got something exciting going on on our booth as well. I just did an event where we did 3D virtual reality t-shirts, which was kind of cool. And then you've got the t-shirt printed. So come and come and check us out and see us at one of our events. 3D virtual reality t-shirts. Man, I need yeah. to find out what events you're going to, but that yeah. sounds great. <laughs> well, I've loved chatting with you today, especially around how SaaS is changing workplaces into ecosystems where people, inventory, hardware, software are all connected and converging now. I think it's incredibly cool what you're doing. But more than anything, just thank you for sitting down and sharing your story with me today. So a big thank you to David for coming on there, talking about the consumerfication of business SaaS and how it's vital for ROI and teaching us to think a little bit bigger than just binary arguments of hardware versus software and also sharing some of the trends that he's seeing in the market and how businesses are using vertical SaaS to actually empower and retain their workforce, address supply chain and inventory challenges and also provide exceptional customer service. But these are just a few of the takeaways that I've written down there during our interview. But what about yourselves? 
What did you take away from today's conversation? Is there anything you'd like to add to it? Please, I encourage anyone listening to either leave me a voicemail, just hit record on your smartphone, whether it be WhatsApp or whatever voice recording app that you want, and email it over to me, techblogwriteroutlook.com. I know you can do it on LinkedIn. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Hold down the audio button. Send me an audio recording. We can play it on a future episode. And we'll keep this conversation going. And also, if you've got any questions you want to ask, or just send me a quick email or DM. Remember, it's at Neil C. Hughes on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and techblogwriter at outlook.com is my email address. So a big thank you to David Lancefield for coming on and talking about uh, and expanding on what they're doing at Zebra Technologies at the moment. But what are we going to discuss tomorrow? We covered a lot today in just 30 minutes. Well, tomorrow is going to be a completely different topic, though. I'm spinning the wheel as we speak that will determine what the topic will be tomorrow. But to find out where it stops, yes, you guessed it, you've got to join me in another conversation bright and early tomorrow. And I will accompany you on your commute, your exercise regime, or whatever it is you're doing when you're listening when I'm speaking into your earballs in a non-sinister way. So a big thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.